everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. It's Yankee and the Brit. Today, we're going to continue our grading each team division by division. And today, it's the AFC South. The weirdest Maddie, division in all of football. <laughs> yes. And we might as well just start with the number one pick overall, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, th they got Trevor Lawrence, which is a no-brainer. Is there anything that hasn't been said about Trevor Lawrence yet? Obviously, uh, people had that moment of worry where he said, oh, I don't need to have a chip on my shoulder. Like, I know that I know that I love football, but I could walk away from it at any time, which I think is an incredibly healthy thing to have. And um, in a like in the newer generation, that's why I think people are looking at more like a, a work-life balance actually makes you perform better than having this massive chip on your shoulder. We just we just haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen an elite athlete have that kind of thing yet. So the Jags had every opportunity to whiff on this pick, and well done for not doing it. That would be a very Jacksonville thing to do to get the one of the most overwhelming number one overall picks. And whiff on it. I thought there was a time where I was like, oh, what if they managed to go full Jacksonville, take Justin Fields because it's Urban Meyer in Ohio? What if it's like all of that kind of thing? So the best thing that they did in their entire draft was by just doing the simple thing of picking Trevor Lawrence. And even if the other quarterbacks are better than him, nobody would have been able to tell that at the time. And then my only thing is my only thing is, and maybe Zach Wilson is better. And then who knows? Maybe it's an amazing um, thing like Kyle Trask becomes the best. But you pick the highest rated quarter. Everybody agrees that it was Trevor Lawrence, then Zach Wilson, then everybody else. But Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence, for me and your boy Matt Sims, were closer than most people had him. So nobody's ever going to be upset with Trevor Lawrence. And them going, he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder. What does this kid have? Uh, what does this kid have happen in his life yeah. to give him a chip? He what won he every game in high school. He never lost a regular season game in college. Yeah, like, I love that. It's if if the Jaguars don't go seventeen and zero, it'll be the first right. regular season game he's lost. That is a great stat. Where do you want his chip to come from, though? Like, not everybody has to be angry about something to be great because. Peyton Manning was the first pick overall. He didn't have a chip. What his chip was is, I am going to compete with myself every day to get better. And I think that's what you get out of Trevor Lawrence. And I think he would, all he was saying is that football does not define who I am, which is absolutely fine with me. Yeah. And at least, at least he, at least Peyton Manning had his brother, who was also a top quality quarterback to compete with. Like Lawrence doesn't even have that. Right. Like, Lawrence is a happy guy. Good family, just got married to his high school sweetheart, is having a great time in life. And he's, in my eyes, he's made a great impression in Jacksonville already. He he went, he signed loads of autographs during COVID, which is more than some other people do. He's um, he's donated large chunks of his signing uh, signing on bonus for being the number one overall pick already to the, to the people of Jacksonville. And I think he re realizes he's going to be in Jacksonville for a long time. And... Um, I think he's implanting himself in the community really, really well. Um, can't really say anything about that, anything else about that pick, really. Everything you just said reminded me of one other guy. Um, just not not the play, but the type of person and what he's doing. Reminds you of Patrick Mahomes at all. He doesn't seem to have a chip, and he seems to be balling yeah. just fine. And yeah, but at least Patrick guy. Mahomes. Yeah, people were chatting shit about Patrick Mahomes at least, but like Trevor Lawrence doesn't even have that. I like just think you don't need a chip. Yeah, that was all you don't my need point it. is. You don't like, need it. You it's don't a new, have to have it. There, there was a point where it did seem like you needed a chip. Like, to be seen as a good player and for NFL coaches to pick you up, you needed the chip. And now people have realized, oh, hey, maybe a healthy work-life balance is something that we should have. As long as you're competitive, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. It's something that, it's a bigger indictment of this is more for real talk, but it's a bigger indictment of the UK and US society of, work, 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 live for the two days of weekend that you get. And then like, but that's not healthy. That's not how life should be. That's why we make a podcast talking about what we love and like, hopefully right. we'll get big off it or something like that. So that we don't have to do that nine till five, only live for the weekend kind of thing. And it's a healthy work-life balance. Trevor Lawrence has it. He has nothing to have a chip on his shoulder about, and he's still a successful quarterback. Well done for Jacksonville for not screwing up the pick.
congratulations. Well done. And then I know we kind of differ on the second pick, but we agree that the whole chemistry idea is good. Yeah. I love the second pick more than you do, but I think that has a lot to do with you thought there was better guys for them to pick. Yeah. Again, I like, I, I like the play. I feel like they have to build that whole team anyway. Pretty, I mean, they have certain spots. Don't get me wrong, but it's a rebuild, and you start with young, talented guys. I like Travis Etienne from Clemson. I thought it was a good pick, and I don't know if either of us did this yet, but I gave Jacksonville an A, and it had a lot to do with they had a lot of high picks to get a lot of good players. Yeah, I I went a bit lower than that. I went a B to a to a B plus. You, you're not going to get lower than. You're not going to get lower than a B when you've picked Trevor Lawrence. Like, let's let's be realistic. And then the other players, I expected their top five to look better because of where they where they picked. Yeah, like you know what I mean. And we've spoke about this on the podcast before. I have a genuine problem with drafting running backs this high. That I do that's usually. All it is. Yeah, that's all it is. And if you're going to pick the running back, if if they were if they were ahead of Pittsburgh, like they obviously got forced to make this pick anyway, if they were going to pick a, a running back, but if they were ahead of Pittsburgh and pick Travis Etienne, he would still be the right call, even if you think Najee Harris is better because of the things that you've said, like um, uh, chemistry and stuff like that. Um, my problem with it is uh, the Jags as a team should know you don't need a first round pick to have a successful running back. Like they've picked up guys in the sixth round and they've been the best players on their team. Whoever the running back was last year had a like thousand yard season and was a like fourth or fifth round pick, I think. I and think Travis like, ETN fits Urban Meyer's system so perfectly yeah. because of his wiggle and shake he's got catching on the backfield. I think system had a lot to do with them rating him higher than you and I would also. Yeah, of course. But it then comes down to is he better than a wide receiver? Like is like because that's what that's what they're saying. They're saying, well, NFL coaches haven't been able to utilize the running back coming out of the backfield. Like Christian McCaffrey is probably the best example of doing it, but he still wouldn't be considered better than like a, like a Scotty Miller in Tampa Bay. No, like he was in that position. You're seeing guys now like ETN who can uh, and uh McCaffrey, Delvin Cook, who can line up in the backfield and shift out into the slot and run pretty good routes. So if you look it like, at it, it you're messes do them things up. like that, like Urban Meyer, a lot of motion at Ohio State, then it'll fit perfectly. None of us are actually know for sure what offense they're going to run either. We're yeah, all exactly. assuming it's Urban Meyer's, but there's a lot of head coaches who come in, like a Mike Tomlin, who's even though he was a defensive coach, he left Dick LeBeau back then to do what he did, and he just was the head coach he didn't yeah. change it to a cover two which is what he coached you know what i'm saying so we think yeah, urban's going the way of ohio state but we don't know for sure yeah and it's it's gonna be we're gonna find out if we're gonna find out again if the college system works in the nfl we're gonna we're gonna be able to see that we think um i would have been more comfortable i texted you at the time and said they would have been able to pick up this guy at the top of the second round. It was the fact that they were they were drafting just not that many picks after that, and I couldn't see anybody else taking their running back. And there was, um, I think Greg Newsom was still on the board, who I think you'll agree with me is a better cornerback than their next pick, Tyson Campbell. That's actually the pick I have the most issue with because I love the Walker Little pick, but the Tyson Campbell pick is what I was like, really? If you're going to uh, yeah. go secondary, I thought there was better corners and safeties that were still on the board, but yeah, that's just me. I, I agree with you. They could have gone, but they like they could have gone Trevor Lawrence, Greg Newsom, uh, Tevin Jenkins, and then maybe even Etienne might even have fell to where they picked Walker Lil. That's the that's the only problem I have with it. I don't actually have a problem with the play of it and it's just where they where they picked him up Tyson Campbell I don't think is a good fit I don't think he makes them better straight away like an Asante Samuel would have made them better straight away because one of the only positions that Jacksonville seemed to have a wealth of talent is an outside cornerback whereas you could probably have Asante Samuel playing in the slot as a slot corner if you wanted him to uh and that would work that would work a little better that would be my only problem with the Tyson Campbell pick. Uh, Walker Little's a great pick. Great, great pick. Um, small sample size. That's why he fell out of the first round. And right. uh, he's got great physical tools. Um, again, he should come in and make them better straight away. So like him and Trevor Lawrence are the two great picks. And then um, 
Andre Cisco, um, what what did you what were your opinions on him as a pick? I like him because he can drop down in the box and play uh, your uh, nickel corner if you needed him to. But I also think it's a guy that you probably could have got with your fourth one of your fourth round picks. But again, we sit here and say that, but they might know something we don't know. Like, Hey, Houston loves this guy, or I've heard so-and-so loves this guy. So let's just go grab him. And the fact that third round picks usually start in the NFL, we'll see this kid could make maybe start for him. Um, I will quote something or not quote, but go back to something Mark Schlereth once said is, when you look at bad teams and they look at their draft the next year and you're like, yeah, but seven guys from the draft started. And he's like, yeah, it's not because they were good. It's because they needed players. So we need to see if he starts because he's good or because they need the player in yeah, the spot, I, I, you know? I don't think this is a bad draft. That's why I've given it a B. I just think it could have looked bad. Like when you write down the first, I'm just judging it on the first five picks like because they picked so high up their first five picks. Like that's just where I've decided to judge because some it's, other teams that we're going to be talking about didn't even have five picks. And they when you have seven five picks, picks in the there. first four rounds, I just think you probably, no matter what, loaded your team with talent. Yeah, exactly. I, but the issue is I feel like it could have looked better on paper. But we have said before, we don't know these players as well as the teams do. We're not yeah. NFL scouts. That's why we're sat here and they're sat doing their job. But to my eye, they could have got a few better players in those positions like they could have gone Trevor Lawrence Trayvon Morig uh Travis Etienne and then walk a little that would have worked and uh, minus well my the eyes. big names Jordan Smith defensive end at uh UAB I think was a freaking steal yeah in the fourth round because yeah, again a kid who came from UAB and he didn't get as much film and didn't get watched enough but he's got those teachable skills plus he seems to have that intangible let's just get after it all the time yeah and the other point to pick up is Urban Meyer is gonna have a great draft knowledge for the next three years like he's gonna have great gonna draft look like knowledge. Seattle yeah he came. yeah he knows exactly where these guys have come from he knows he knows pretty much everything about them let's let's be real um outside of I the mean, tape as well Richard which is a great Sherman, thing for them Richard Sherman is a perfect um example wide receiver to cornerback to Pete Carroll saw him, got him in the fifth round and look at him now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like Pete Carroll knew because he played Stanford or because he recruited these guys, these college coaches, that's the one thing they have a leg up. That was kind of why I was a little bit more hard on Carolina this year on their draft too, was because I'm like, dude, you just came out of college. Like, but maybe that's why he's going to look like a genius and I'm going to look like a fucking idiot at the end of exactly. it. Exactly. It's just, it's just understand. For me, it's, it's like understanding the value. Like, yes, you may know something that we don't know about this guy. And for some, for some time, uh, sometimes it may be not worth the risk. Like this guy is so much better than everybody else thinks he is. It's not worth the risk to see if he falls to our next pick. And I totally get that. If you think that, but to me, there's, they got their, position picks in the wrong order if you get what i mean yeah absolutely and then moving on to the texans um F. before the brit goes all american here i'm gonna go all brit i guess i actually for the shitty draft picks they had which this is what you got bill o'brien crushed you it's not even your fault and i am not a fan of everything going on in houston right now gave him a c plus just because i like davis mills I like the picks they got, but they just didn't have shit for picks. So I guess I'm being the more optimistic, nice guy in this, and you're being the more pessimistic, negative, which is a flip for yeah. us. We've so we yeah. swapped around. I'm I'm going with an F. Um, for this, this is my this is my lowest draft grade. I know it's harsh to give it's it's harsh to give somebody an F. I understand. You Houston have no doubt added talent, but the their whole off season has been ridiculous. Once you look at what they've done in this draft. Yeah. So, Cause Brevin Jordan is the only guy who's going to start next year, unless it, Davis Mills is forced into it. And he will unless not be Davis ready. Mills beats out Tyra Taylor. That's the, that's the only, that's or the competition. Gets Tyra a shot again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But that's the, that's the, that's it. Isn't it? It's you've got such a shockingly awful team. 
and you've not managed to get better. And you can say, you oh, it's Bill, o- it's, it's Bill O'Brien, it's Bill O'Brien, it's Bill O'Brien because of your draft capital. But other people in that building signed off on the trades as well. Like, right, I'm so, just saying the new GM yeah. is in a bad spot with Deshaun Watson. Yeah, of course. It's, I, I don't think it's his given. fault. But my, my problem with it is the Davis Mills pick. The other picks, fine. The wide receiver that they moved up to get, probably not a good idea to move up when you have... That's my other problem. They moved up to get players. They should have been trading back to get more lottery picks. But anyway, they moved up to get like the one decent player that they actually picked up. And then Davis Mills, if you're going to get... So Deshaun Watson has lost loads of his trade value already for reasons that everybody knows by now. So, and he's so, probably going to get suspended. Exactly. So he's lost all of his trade value already. And then with your first pick, which even if it does come in the third round, it's still your first pick. You pick a quarterback. I have to see, say, that's why I we're think not trading. Plus, we're not trading. Because you have to do something for the future behind Tyrod Taylor, knowing no matter what happens to Sean Watson's gone. And you know me, this is where it becomes a personal you know, preference. I love Davis Mills. I just thought he needed a year or two to sit. So that's why I thought, hey, you're already garbage. You're going to be garbage. Let's see if we can find a quarterback because I think no matter what happens, if he plays or doesn't, it ain't for Deshaun Watson ain't playing for the Texans anymore. So I don't, I don't hate Davis Mills. I from the film that I've seen, I he's a really he's a really good player. Would have been if if your Vikings took him, he I would have been saying, yep, good pick. I would have preferred Calamon, but good pick. That's okay. Um, say, same with Tampa if they decided to pick him instead of Carl Trask as well. You say, yep, fine. That's just different evaluations. That's that's totally okay. Um, but to for Deshaun Watson to crush his trade value already, and then for you to crush it even more when reality is you're going to be picking in the top five of the draft next year. Uh, like, so you're going to get the, one of the best quarterbacks in the draft next year. Then but un- unless you think Davis Mills is better than all the quarterbacks is, next year. I know they say that we don't know for sure. And Crip Sims always says you don't know until they play the season. But as of right now, a lot of teams had Kellen Mond and uh, Kyle Trask and Davis Mills above next year's quarterbacks, which I find like, how the fuck, but okay. It's, it's it's difficult to know. It's difficult to know if Davis Mills is going to be better than Spencer Rattler. I think Rattler. this kid's got like, all the talent. If he wouldn't have nuked his knees a couple times, he'd probably be a first-round pick because he's super accurate. That's where I think maybe it's different. Maybe I have too big of a love for him or you don't love him enough, one of the two. You yeah, I don't, like, I, I don't think it's a problem with Davis Mills. I just wouldn't have taken a quarterback there when you've, like, the only way you were going to get out of it within the next, like, three or four years, the hole that you've got you, the hole that you've got yourselves in, is taking as much draft capital as you could for Deshaun Watson. And if you're going to do this kind of thing anyway, which which they might well, not have been going to do, at- if After they could have traded him at the start up, of you're still getting two first round picks for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, but you could have got like if they just Maybe, went, but I if did. they went before, they could have got him before everything came out. They could have got three or I don't four think they're from to Miami. Win right now either. Yeah, yeah, but they could have got they could have got three or four from Miami if they just got rid. And that was the way that you were getting out though in the next three yeah. or four years. This is a rebuild for three or four this years. Whole um, mas- massage fiasco to go on yeah. either. And they were hoping to play teams against each other going up to the draft. So that's why yeah. I kind of feel bad for the whole I feel bad for them, but it doesn't mean they could have made themselves look better in my eyes by not picking a quarterback. That's but I that's think we all, both agree they yeah. got one player in uh uh Brevin Jordan who's gonna start yeah. other than that, or start because he's good enough, otherwise it will be the Mark Schlereth starting because they had no yeah, other choice. Uh, their off season just has been terrible. They've just what do you think about started. Indianapolis? Uh, yeah, so the Colts I've given, I've given a C plus. I, I feel like I've been a lot harsher on this, on this division than the other divisions. So my reason for giving them a C plus is, uh, I don't, I don't love it when teams double up on positions with their first and second round picks. But, Loved it. Yeah, I, I, I thought you would. Um, it was their weakness. Like let's let's get that real. But their wide receiving core still looks terrible. And there were lots of wide receivers on the board in terms of the draft, but there were there's aren't any wide receivers in free agency where there's lots of defensive ends in free agency. So they could well, quit pick Quitty Pay, Terrence Marshall Jr., and then 
gone from there? From what I understand from reading, they really believe that Michael Pittman's making a jump this year. Michael so I Pittman. Think, is I think they feel better about their receiving core than you and I probably do. And I love T.Y., but you're, I mean, he's not, you know, I get what you're saying. But I think if they got after the quarterback uh, last year, they were, and they did, they played well with Rivers, who I think played bad for Rivers. So I actually think Carson Wentz is an upgrade from Rivers this year. 100%. Not, not over Rivers' career, just from what he was with the Colts last year. Yeah. And uh, I think Quiddy Pays, the, the guy who was ready to play on that defense right away, you got another guy that you bring in. I think um, Granson, tight end from SMU, is another help because um, look at where Carson Wentz comes from, tight end factory in Philadelphia when he was there. And then – um, I really like that they said, now, we like you, Carson, but we don't love you. So here's Sam Ellinger, too. So you better play well. They definitely called him before doing that. There's no oh, chance yeah, that... Oh, yeah, they handled like, it. They, called, sure they handled it better. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they handled it better than the <clears throat> Eagles did. They they and definitely you're not called scared him. scared of a sixth-round pick as you are a second-round pick. If Carson Wentz is afraid of... Sam Ellinger, then there's something. So then he's not your quarterback, I'm afraid. Right. Not not that there's anything uh, particularly wrong with Sam Ellinger. I actually quite like. I was actually saying mm, maybe the Cowboys, maybe the Cowboys take Sam Ellinger. That that wouldn't be. I said that a young in the, backup um, when you have a veteran yeah. quarterback is smart. When you have a young quarterback, you need a bat a veteran backup. Yeah, of course. And I I was just thinking, the guy's got a a great mentality, Sam Ellinger, and he's. Like uh, he's got a good football IQ from from what I've seen. He makes the he makes a good read quickly. His arm talent's not the best. His pocket presence could really do with some help. But that he's a six round pick quarterback. He's probably a great career backup quarterback, and that's fine. That is a great place to be if you're you're the next Andy Dalton. Like, you know, but Andy Dalton could be a starter. Like, you're the next, like, Nick Foles was the comparison that I saw online for him and, and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, that that's a great place to be. That's a really good draft. Um, We've spoke about Quitty Pay before. I had Quitty, we said, why haven't the Giants taken Quitty Pay? Like, that's what we said in the NFC East. We said, why haven't I they thought there was a good chance the Vikings were going to take him. Yeah, but it was in the spots that, in the spots that they were at, it was like, why haven't they taken this guy who's clearly the best? defensive end and then they did like they just didn't take him um could be the could be the most dominant defensive lineman out of this class with good coaching is why i have written is why i have written here um and then uh let's let's try this on adding ad uh adi yungbo adi yungbo adi yungbo adi ad Adi yeah, Adi 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 there you go. It took yeah, me a so, second so, to run like that and, and rehear it. Yep, something like that. And uh plenty another fun name for us to pronounce in this draft. Um he's he's another edge with physical traits, very much like what the Colts coach him up. Do, yeah, what the Colts do tend to draft, but they have a sketchy track record of doing it. Uh, he didn't really produce in college, but he has the physical traits to be great at See, the NFL and level, and it's a great place for him to be. I come from the Minnesota Vikings school. This is what we do. We yeah. draft traits and we turn you into Daniil Hunter and Everson Griffin. And so yeah. that's, I love the traits of this guy. He is such a height, weight, speed guy. If you have the right coaching, oh, watch out. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think my my issue with it, with it is doubling up, getting two very similar players when you have other needs on the football team. Like we think of the Colts and we're like, Oh, now they've got a quarterback. They could go make a run. It's like when we're watching on paper, the quarterback has T.Y. Hilton, who's hitting the he's he's getting on a little bit. And Pittman, who could be incredible. You watch Pittman and you think, yeah, this guy could be great, but he could also not be They're great. gonna stand like, on. He that hasn't run shown game. as he's great yet. Yeah, like just land on your running game, uh, definitely. And then and to they finish just signed out, Eric Fisher. I saw that. That's a great move. You see, that was the uh, that was the problem. Like, why haven't they drafted a left tackle instead? Why haven't they drafted a wide receiver instead? Well, they go and get Eric Fisher, and that's a great. That's and a great I move guarantee you, they had a deal ahead of the draft. They just weren't going to sign it after June first, so it didn't take away from next year's compensatory picks. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. 
Um, All right. And then the Tennessee Titans to finish off. Um, the Tennessee Titans are probably my favorite to win the division. They came in very risky. Like, you know, when you look at a team going in and it's like, if you don't draft well here, you could be a real mess. And in my eyes, they drafted perfectly. Okay, so I gave them an A, but yeah, I'm going to tell you this. If it was not Vrabel, I probably would not have gave them an A. But this is such a Vrabel team. This is such. They went and got high-quality players that play on the edge, that are tough guys. Now, I know Far me and you have both talked it blue in the face. Farley's injury scares me. But I thought this was the perfect landing spot for him because yeah. I thought Vrabel was the type of guy, like me and you talked to Dan Campbell, like, this kid can play, and if we only get five years out of him, so be it. Let's just get him and ride that five years or whatever. And you just hope that if his back does flare up, it's not during the playoffs or something important. But I love this draft. They hit all their needs in the first four picks, and then they got some really good guys that have huge upside with their last three picks. I love it. Yeah, there are three of the three of those players. I would be very happy if they were Cowboys jerseys right now. Um, and that's Caleb Farley, Dylan Radons, and uh, Elijah Molden. Uh, Elijah Molden is a great pick because, no, he's not as talented as Caleb Farley, but he's very solid. And if Farley's injury does flare up, look, we have somebody who can just step right into uh, to that position who isn't necessarily as talented, but is a very, very solid co uh, cornerback. I really like Elijah Molden. I was kind of texting you throughout the draft being like, why the hell haven't the Cowboys taken Molden yet? Why the hell haven't the Cowboys taken Molden yet? Like that, like I was at that kind of point and they still didn't take him. And then the, then they uh, snapped him up. Dylan Radon's a little undersized, but also incredibly athletic for that running, that running offense uh, that they have. Um, if they train him up, he's going to be great. He seems to have like the football IQ because he's so undersized, it's, and, but he's managed to get to where he is. You think, well, the guy's got, great football IQ then great technique and people can put weight on like you can put weight on in a gym like that can happen and then Caleb Farley was my favorite cornerback it was a lot of people's favorite cornerbacks just people were scared because of the injuries um I love this pick and if he stays healthy then he's the best cornerback in this draft high risk incredibly high reward if um if it pays off and I'll just close out this um for my opinion I think that Vrabel looked at Monty Rice and was like, oh, I can teach this kid to do everything yeah. he doesn't know yet. And he, he, you know what I mean? I think he saw talent and was like, oh, I can teach this kid. We're going to be fine and let's grab him. So I think that's a really good pick. He might be a guy that now you don't see huge production from for a year or two, but I think with the right coaching, he might be one of those guys. They're like, hey, you remember? Oh, that guy. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Definitely, and I, I like I, I love this draft. Um, I gave an A for the for the Tennessee Titans, and not only did they kind of draft for needs, but I also feel like they've plugged those holes with good players. Like it's kind of for me, it's 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 what the Jags kind of should have done in my eyes. Like they should have got this caliber player every pick, and they they just didn't. Um, but hey, it's the AFC South, and. That's the craziest division in football. Nobody knows what's going on there. Yeah, it's one of them along with your East, but uh, that's... We're, no, we're too traditional. We're just traditionally bad at the moment. That's But that's just nobody difference. knows what's going on there. Nobody knows <laughs> right now. Like, we can all guess who's going to win that thing and with how many wins, and nobody's got a clue because the last couple of years have been so different from each other. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I know what you mean. And this, uh, this division's that on steroids, oddly, like for me. Except for Washington, every one of those teams is one injury away from winning five games. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. And there's only one team in the AFC South that I believe won't win it, and that's Houston uh, with everything going on. Yeah, the I got Whereas, the Colts winning it, but you never know. And I got Houston yeah, the, drafting. The, the, the Jags could easily, like, that's the thing about it. The Jags could easily win it. Like, you know, um, we're going to see Trevor Lawrence in London this year. Very exciting. We've got Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. I think under the two. new deal, you're going to see Trevor Lawrence in London every year. We will see. Tre Trevor Lawrence will be, be will be becoming the British quarterback. The Jags actually make 28% of their revenue off the London games. 
Um, okay. I think that they, I think it's written in though, that they get guaranteed one a year. Yeah, definitely. We, we Jacksonville are always in. Nobody London wants to go except for Jacksonville. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not against London. It's like these players just don't want to fly and spend a week over there and adjust to six hour time difference. And it's just, that's what it is. Yeah. The, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars are every players, uh, every NFL fans, second team because of how often they come play in the UK. Well, they're not everyone's second team. But I get your point. Though. Most people's second team. Like you support your, if they're playing, if the Cowboys are playing at Wembley, I'll be supporting the Cowboys. If anybody else is playing at Wembley, I'll be supporting the Jags. That's where, that's where it basically comes down to. And yeah, great. Awesome. AFC South done. There you go. Well, guys, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos on YouTube and Facebook, other podcasting platforms. All right, guys. Till next time. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.